Hi, my name's uh, John Carpenter. I'm the uh, Metals Conservator at the Department of Materials Conservation, West Australian Museum. And today I'm going to be talking about a cannon and how we conserve these cannons. Conservators are mainly concerned with the materials from which these objects are made. And that's our main interest. Well, I'm interested in the fact that it's a cannon, but it is the material that we're concerned about. This is a cast iron cannon. And essentially we have to remove uh, chlorides or salt from this object, otherwise it will just corrode. When it falls into the sea, when a ship sinks, eventually these sorts of things end up as the main material on the surface of the shipwreck. And uh, they become covered in corrosion products. They start rusting, and then sediments and seabed materials, shells, corals, other objects on the, on the wreck can all become attached to it it's called concretion. It's a layer that forms on the outside. This uh, layer obviously has to be removed. But when we find the shipwreck and we find the cannon, first of all we have to raise it with lift bags. So we have to detach it from the seabed if it's become attached to it. And we attach lift bags, inflate them in there, and raise the cannon to the surface, and then maybe tow it to the shore, put it onto a truck, We'll be carefully wrap it. We hope the concretion is still intact because that stops it drying out. We want to keep this wet and we bring it back to our laboratory. So once we get here, uh, we can remove the concretion and that's simply done with a hammer and chisel. The idea is to crack the concretion. It's like cement. There's a sort of a soft sludgy layer between that hard cement material and the cannon and that allows the concretion to be lifted off. So if we can crack it, lift off the pieces, we expose the cannon surface. Sometimes that concretion also forms inside the bore of the cannon. And if we're lucky enough to have a plug called a tampion or a tompion, which is a wooden plug in the end, and that survives, then the concretion doesn't form inside and that means it's clear. This particular cannon still had its cannonball inside. It had the tampion or the plug at the end. It had the wadding. And we were able to remove all of that successfully. If not, if it had been clogged up with concretion, we have to core it with a coring machine and that actually cuts the concretion out in several stages. So we work our way down to the, to the back of the gun. Sometimes the cannonball is still there and we pick it up in the corer. Also we have to drill out the, the vent or the touch hole, because that's usually plugged up as well. And then we put the cannon into a tank containing a solution of caustic soda. Caustic soda is an alkali and that inhibits corrosion and essentially that gun, this cannon, could sit in that solution uh, for a number of years and not corrode. However, what we do is connect it up to a, a process called electrolysis. The cannon becomes the negative side of a cell and two sheets of mild steel which fit either side are the anodes or the positive side of the cell. And we pass a, a voltage through of about two volts. That actually um, drives out the chlorides, also reduces the corrosion products. As you know, when iron corrodes, it forms rust and that expands. It actually reduces the volume of that material, makes the surface of this cannon porous, so the salt can actually go into the solution. This can take anything up to about three years. Now, a lot of our cannon have come from shipwrecks, and they've been under the sea for three centuries. If you look about one year per century to stabilize a cannon, that's been under the water. Sometimes it takes longer, but uh, on average that's about right. For something like an anchor, which is made of wrought iron as opposed to cast iron, it can take about two years to treat. After we've uh, removed the salt, we have to remove the cannon from the solution, but we have to remove the caustic soda solution, which forms carbonate if we just take it out and allow it to dry, causes efflorescence on the surface. And that material um, is obviously undesirable, so we have to soak it for a little while to make sure we get rid of all the caustic residues. And then um, we can take it out, we dewater it, we can use methylated spirits, we dry it off, then we coat it with a rust inhibitor. The cannon, when it's been treated, is this black colour. The rust inhibitor also enhances that and gives it the appearance that we would accept normally for a cannon. Uh, once that's done, we have to put this cannon in molten wax. We have a big tank of molten wax and uh, we place it in the wax, uh, sit it there for about a couple of days, the air in the porous surface comes out, 
then we turn the uh, heating elements off, the wax begins to cool, and then it's drawn into that porous surface and consolidates or strengthens that surface. And then finally, we coat it with shellac. And we use shellac because it's compatible with the wax. If you just have a waxy surface, although it's a very hard wax, it can attract dust and make it a bit dirty and, and from handling. Essentially, that's, that's the process. The cannon carriage, which we have here, is a replica because often as not, nothing survives of a carriage. It does happen sometimes. It completely depends on the environment. Uh, all the fittings usually are wrought iron. They don't survive normally. So this is just a replica, so we can actually show the cannon as it probably would have been on the ship. And essentially, that's the process.